October 29, 2025. Today belongs to 3, 3i Atlas. A newly discovered interstellar comet is hitting solar perihelion at record speed, with every trajectory model on the line. If its path shifts even slightly, the fallout could rewrite what we think we know about visitors from the deep. What could make an object from another star suddenly defy natural predictions? The answer starts at this hinge of velocity. A comet on a hyperbolic track doesn't linger. After rounding the sun a little beyond 1.4 astronomical units, 3i Atlas resumes its escape, never to return. Thousands of astrometric measurements keep it consistent with a natural interstellar path. Closest approach to Earth comes December 19, 2025, at roughly 1.8 AU, about 270 million kilometers. At that distance, Atlas will be a faint, diffuse smear, likely 16th to 18th magnitude, visible only to mid-sized scopes under dark skies. That's the baseline, a comet that behaves, fading steadily as it recedes from both Sun and Earth. The coma, once driven by solar heating, dims. Observatories prepare for routine post-perihelion work. Light curves and precise positions, each new point is checked against the predicted orbit with Milyark's second care. Tiny angular offsets that betray when something is off. For a natural comet, residuals in the tens of Milyark's seconds are normal, especially after the solar glare blackout. By early December, astronomers expect to reacquire Atlas with modest uncertainty. 20 to 40 milliarc seconds in position. The expectation is a slow, predictable fade with no abrupt swings in direction or brightness. That's the standard. Any deviation, an out-of-family brightening, a positional jump, or a late reacquisition triggers a rethink. Otherwise, it's the mathematics of hyperbolic escape writing the story. A small circle of theorists led by Harvard's A.V. Loeb has pushed a more extreme scenario, testing the edge of physics and engineering. At perihelion, they argue, 3i Atlas could attempt an Oberth-style maneuver, firing engines or releasing energy to reverse course and target Earth. The geometry alone is brutal. At perihelion, Earth sits nearly 0.4 AU sunward of Atlas, with the sun blocking any direct lane. Swinging a multi-kilometer nucleus onto an earthbound trajectory would demand an impulsive var of warm 37 km s in a single brief burn. That's nearly 10 times the biggest velocity change any spacecraft has ever achieved, and orders of magnitude beyond what cometary outgassing can supply. The energy is staggering. Even at perfect efficiency, propellant mass would rival the body itself and the thermal spike would flash vaporized surface layers. Such an event would be unmistakable. A violent brightening, a narrowly focused dust jet, and a radical kink in the orbit. High cadence photometry would spike. Astrometric residuals would jump from tens of milliarc seconds to arc seconds or more. Radar and telescope arrays would flag the deviation within days, if not hours. Loeb's group insists even extravagant possibilities must bow to data. Their challenge is simple. After the blackout, scrutinize every residual and light curve for an impulsive maneuver. If Atlas reappears on track, the hypothesis collapses. If it vanishes or re-emerges far off course, the conversation changes. For now, it remains a falsifiable thought experiment and a reminder that the universe sometimes rewards those who check the unlikely. A more measured alternative draws attention, a modest perihelion push, not to reverse toward Earth, but to bend 3i Atlas onto a new outbound asymptote toward Jupiter. In orbital mechanics, even number 1.2 km s at perihelion could tilt the escape direction and set up a future Jovian encounter. This is still no small feat, far beyond natural outgassing, which imparts centimeters per second over weeks, not kilometers per second in one shot. Yet compared to the Earth target case, the energy drops from impossible to barely conceivable. For trackers, the job becomes detective work. Modelers watch for subtle clues, a slow drift from predicted positions, a non-gravitational parameter that grows too quickly, a persistent misfit in the astrometry. The telltale of a low thrust or impulsive tweak is a kink in the orbital solution. Small, 
but unmissable to those who live in milliarc seconds. The practical grind is relentless. Weeks of precision measurements cross-checked nightly against the best fit trajectory. Any offset that grows with time triggers deeper probes. The stakes are high. Even a slight deviation could hint at engineered intent or a natural process we haven't cataloged. For now, all eyes are on the numbers, waiting for any sign that 3i Atlas isn't simply passing through, but steering toward the outer planets. Late November is decisive. As the blackout ends, telescopes in both hemispheres coordinate a global sweep, racing to fix Atlas's faint return. Protocol is blunt. Reacquire by Thanksgiving or pivot to anomaly mode. Even a modest perihelion change, just 0.1 km s, would produce a 1030 arc second sky plane offset, far beyond modern survey uncertainties. The detection threshold is clear. Significant deviations will shout above the noise. Citizen astronomers, university observatories, and automated network sync schedules, splitting the search grid by longitude and latitude. Data streams near real time, cross-checked against predicted ephemerides. If the comet fails to show on schedule or falls outside the error ellipse, the global community shifts instantly to anomaly investigation. This is a binary gate. Either Atlas is where models said it would be, or something fundamental has changed. Tracking 3i Atlas is no longer just for pros. A suite of accessible tools puts live data and visualization within reach of anyone curious. The SkyLive offers a dynamic 3D view, updating Atlas alongside the major planets, coordinates, apparent magnitude, even backyard simulations, solar system, Scope and open source Stellarium let you overlay alignments and trajectories, rotate the sky, and compare to historical events. For raw numbers, the Vera Rubin Observatory's LSST delivers nightly astrometry, while Gaia's star grid anchors precise pointing for faint movers like Atlas. Pipelines feed public ephemeris services, closing the gap between professional discovery and public participation. With these tools, observers can model the January alignment plan visibility windows, and contribute to anomaly detection. Atlas becomes a coordination hub, its track, brightness, and every tiny deviation open to collaborative scrutiny. From the 6th through the 10th, Mars, Venus, Mercury, the Sun, Earth, and Jupiter line the ecliptic while 3i Atlas threads the same stage. The peak on January 9th sets a geometry that invites careful measurement and cultural awe. Astronomers plot positions against the planetary backdrop, knowing that even small deviations in brightness or track carry outsized meaning in a crowded sky. The alignment resonates beyond the technical. It echoes moments, like the 1859 Carrington era, that welded celestial geometry to public imagination. Not identical, but visually potent and shared. This isn't just pretty sky. It's a call to action. Observatories synchronize runs. Citizen scientists set pre-dawn alarms. Data pipelines flag anomalies in near real time. The alignment becomes both scientific opportunity and cultural bookmark, anchoring a global watch that can outlast Atlas's fade. The calendar is set. January 6, 10, 2026 is when the sky asks for its closest scrutiny. As noted in Minor Planet Center Circulars and JPL Horizons data, the baseline remains a natural hyperbolic escape, with closest Earth approach around December 19, 2025 at 1.8 AU. Yet this chronicle has outlined two testable alternatives, a 37 km s reversal toward Earth and a far smaller 1.1.2 km s nudge toward Jupiter, both diagnosable in post-perihelion tracking. Failure to reacquire by late November, per global protocols, would itself signal an unexpected event. And while early January alignments offer rare viewing, the true nature of 3i Atlas's course is still unresolved. What follows, perihelion, will be settled by data, not theory. The next chapter depends on what the world's telescopes see, or fail to see, in the weeks ahead. In Cosmos, we trust, 